Good morning, Pastor Jay here with your Friday devotion, and I'm in the chapel uh, today. And we're going to continue on with our book, We Make the Road by Walking, uh, by Brian McLaren. And what I want to talk to you about today are some of the presets that I believe we have. Uh, I think we have a preset, a natural preset in our heart for karma. We like the idea of what goes around comes around. We like the idea of fairness, the idea that you're going to pay for what you've done, or you're going to be rewarded for what you do. And that always colors people's view of the afterlife. They think, well, you know, good people go to heaven, bad people go the other way. But that's not really our faith, is it? Another thing I think is hardwired into us is the idea that uh, revenge is the right thing that the right thing to do is to lash out at those who have hurt you, that they should get what's coming to them, kind of like a little bit of karma there. They should get what's coming to them. Well, I want to share with you something uh, from this book that he talks about Jesus' uh, disciples after he's been crucified and the surprising message and mission that he gives them. So let's, let's listen to this. This is from the, the, uh, the voice of the apostles. We were afraid that first Sunday night just three days after Jesus died, really afraid. We were afraid to go outside in case someone might recognize us as Jesus' friends and notify the authorities. To them, Jesus was nothing more than a troublemaker and a rabble-rouser. The rumors about Jesus rising from the dead, spread by some of the women among us, only made matters worse. The authorities would know by those rumors that dreams of an uprising hadn't completely died, which meant that we were in danger real danger. So we locked ourselves in a room. But even there we were afraid. Afraid because at any moment some temple guards or Roman soldiers might bang on the door. So there we remained, tense, jumpy, simmering with anxiety. What happened Friday had been ugly. And we didn't want to happen, we wanted, didn't want to happen to the rest of us. Every sound startled us. Suddenly we all felt something. A presence, familiar yet impossible. How could Jesus be among us? Peace be with you, he said. He showed us his scarred hands and feet. It started to dawn on us. The women's reports were not just wishful thinking. They were true. And we too were experiencing the risen Christ. I give you my peace, he said again. And then he did three things that changed us forever. First he said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Here we were huddled, huddled in our little safe house like a bunch of cowards. And he was still interested in sending cowards like us to continue his mission. Next, he came close to us and breathed on us. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. Of course, this reminded us of the story of Genesis when God breathed life into Adam and Eve. It was a new beginning, he was telling us. It was a new Genesis. And we were to be prototypes of a new kind of human community. Next came the greatest shock of all. After what happened on Friday, anyone with scars like his would have been expected to say, go and get revenge on those evil beasts that did this to me. But Jesus said, I am sending you with the power to forgive. Peace, forgiveness, those aren't the responses you expect from someone who had suffered what Jesus suffered. But that brief moment when our locked hideout was filled with his presence, that was the message we all received. Christian faith, a lot of it is about not doing what feels natural to you. It's about doing the opposite. It's about loving the enemy. It's about going the extra mile. It's about turning the cheek. Things that don't always make sense to us on a gut level. It's not how we're hardwired. And you know, in that series I finished on world religions, that's the big difference is grace between us and every other world religion. We have the uniqueness of grace, that we are not a product of what we do, that we are not rewarded for what we do, but we are blessed because of what God has done. So let's say a prayer about that today. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that in Jesus Christ, you paid the price, a price we couldn't pay. Now, Lord, help us to live for the praise of you. We know we can't pay you back, but we can pay it forward. Lord, help us to do that this day, to go through this week and every week with that goal of simply sharing the love and generosity you first showed to us freely in a way that brings forgiveness and peace to all people. 
Lord, bless us. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend.